Yes, I did it! I finally got all the footage from my Terranigma video! Now I can finally start making another game with you! I miss this! No, this has to be a joke! I have the game right here! This can't be Ura. happening! What's happening here? I think I'm losing my mind! Why always around this time of the year? Well, I said I will talk about one of the best games ever made, and this slight mental breakdown will not stop me from this, so... Eternal Darkness, not only one of the best games ever made, it is also one of the incredible few genuinely terrifying games, and also in a way no other game since then ever did. But first, we have to talk about what makes a scary game scary. There are games which give you the illusion of horror by solely relying on something like cheap jump scares. And these games are dumb, and I don't like them. It is not horror or even spooky if you scream into my ear. Of course you get a reaction out of people if you do this. Normally the reaction is getting punched in the face, but I digress. The player is not afraid of the scenario. They are afraid of the next time a loud noise suddenly bursts their eardrums. These games have not earned the title horror. I hate these in movies as well as in games. It is just a cheap way of emulating uneasiness in situations where they flat out fail to produce genuine horror. And I can also say, this game is the only example I have ever seen where jump scare worked. But I will talk about this a bit later. Other games and a lot of bad movies rely on gore. Oh look, something bloody and disgusting happened. I bet this makes you feel uncomfortable. No shit Sherlock, the threat of pain is scary, but it is not the sort of scary you expect from an interactive medium like a game. Really scary games explore things like psychological horror and the uncanny valley. It makes you question if you should take one more step into the unknown. They give you a mystery, and you know answering the mystery will end up bad for you, but you just have to know. The question being unanswered is as terrifying as the answer itself. Heck, sometimes it's even more unsettling. Fantastic horror games don't rely on scaring the characters in the game, but the one playing it. That's why only a few games deserve the title horror games. A few examples are Silent Hill, I have no mouth and I must scream, and even something like Dead Space. So. What it is in this game that just works? Well, to answer this, we have to take a look at the game. What are some of the first images you will imagine if someone mentions Nintendo? One of these things is not like the others. Which one is different? Do you know? Yeah, what is Yoshi's story doing here, stupid horse? Jokes aside, this was Nintendo's first M-rated game, and it is a damn shame they forgot about it. I will just let the narrator explain the story. Flesh. Bone. Bound together with the oddest magical incantation. This wretched book is where it all began so long ago. Before time. Before humanity. I am Dr. Edward Roivas. I am a clinical psychologist. I am also dead. This is not my story, nor even the story of the Roivas family. It is the story of humanity. In short, this is about the struggle of humanity against the forces of darkness over a time span of 2000 years. It is straight out of the Shetulu mythos, with old gods people losing their minds just by looking at monsters, and even the Necronomicon. That is awesome! And it is one of the incredible few games which works in this setting. You play as Alexandra Rolvers, who gets a call from the police after they have found her grandpa dead in his mansion. It's my job, lady. You're the only living relative, and no, we can't check dental records. There's no head. 
Oh, none of this makes sense. Lost his head, so it was probably old age. The police investigation isn't going forward, so Alex decides to investigate on her own and searches the building. A horror game in the mansion. I have never heard that one before. This is the game's hubword. While searching what happened to your grandpa, you have to solve puzzles to open up new parts and find all sorts of items, story bits and nightmare fuel. Relatively early on, you open a hidden room with strange artifacts and a weird book. And this book is the connection between the different levels. I was once a fool. In a beautiful scene where they switch from Latin to English mid sentence, you learn about a legionnaire named Pius Augustus. Viris Consovandai, Facusatis Aquae Sumat, et animus eorum conferma. I'm Centurio Augustus. Wolo I would like to compliment you once more on your battle tactics. Our enemies did not have a chance. This is the tutorial of the game. After a few easy puzzles, and fights where you learn you can target and destroy different parts of the enemies, you enter a chamber with three pedestals. On each is the symbol of a different old god. The one you choose is your path through this game. Pius will be the chosen old one's apostle with a sole goal to bring him into our world. This gives you three different ways to play this game, with different enemies, bosses and even difficulty. The difficulty comes mainly from the magic in this game, and it is awesome! It's not like any other system I have ever seen. You need a lot of things in order to use it in the first place. You have to find runes, a codex to translate the runes, a circle of power to place the runes, and the spell scroll which tells you what runes work together. Then you have to align the spell with one of the gods. As an example, you have just found a spell to heal a stat. If you align it with the red god, it will increase your health bar. All enemies have an alignment as well. So if Pius at the start chooses the red one, all his minions are red and it will take you way longer to find the runes to cast red magic for yourself. The three gods represent one of the three parts of the Triforce, Strength, Wisdom and Insanity. Wait, what? This isn't really happening! And like in a giant game of rock, paper, scissors, they beat each other. Strength beats Insanity, Insanity beats Wisdom and Wisdom beats Strength. So if you attack a Wisdom enemy with an Insanity spell, it is super effective. There is even a hidden fourth essence you can gain which is strong against everyone. Yeah, the magic system is awesome. You can even try out combinations of runes to get spells before you find the scroll. The gameplay consists of searching the mansion for new pages of the book. No, not those pages. Playing the stories from the different characters, learning about the unknown, and finding a way to stop Pius at the end with the collective efforts of a dozen characters over 2000 years. In each chapter you learn something new which helps you explore the mansion further. Like here, in the last story you had a puzzle with candles and after a chapter is over Alexandra can now interact with the same puzzle to get a new item. Yeah, sounds interesting, but why is this one of the best horror games ever made? Well two things. The first is the patented and never again used sanity system of this game. If your character witnesses something horrible, they lose sanity. If an enemy is just looking at you, it ends up with you going insane. And this is where the fun starts. It starts with rather harmless stuff, like seeing blood whip off the walls or hearing voices. Yeah. 
But it gets interesting once it breaks the fourth wall. Imagine, you enter a room filled with enemies and finding yourself in a fight of your life. Just to see the character doesn't move and the message on screen saying the controller has stopped working. Panic, you try to put the controller back in just to see a white flash and the character standing at the exit of the last room. Yeah, it is kind of trolling, but you cannot deny you were scared of losing your progress. And this is just one of the many, many different ways this game is fucking with you. Here is the reaction of another YouTuber to one of these effects. Satan Bill is underneath my basement, it's true. Also Brenda has a thing for me. What? What the f- Oh my god, that confused the fuck out of me! I thought I had- I could have sworn that I had bought the game! The first time I witnessed such a scare, if I had a lump of coal up my ass, it would be a diamond at the end of it. This is just an unbelievable way of scaring a player. You aren't afraid of what happens to the characters in the story. However, many characters have a terrible fate. You are afraid what the game has in store for you the player. The other part of this game and the reason why I love this so much is this. I know, I know, I already said I hate jump scares. So why is this the only exception I know? Well, this scene happens relatively early in the game and it is completely optional. It only happens if you investigate the bathtub. In a game where you are encouraged to investigate every nook and cranny. But this wouldn't make it good. The genius of this is, it is the only jump scare in the entire game. But you don't know this at this point. So after you just hit this. You immediately think, oh, it's one of these games. And from this point on, you are just paranoid about getting another jump scare. And it never comes. This is just beautiful. It is screaming suspense, like the bomb under the table that will not explode. And this is not a short game. One playthrough is about 14 hours long. So having this mindset after half an hour and nothing happens for the entire time has an effect on you unlike any sheep scare will ever have. During the story you learn what happened with your grandpa as well as how to stop Pius. He had 2000 years prep time and to stand a chance you need all the other essences. As well as having to enter a giant hidden city. You use the whole city as a magic circle to summon the god who is his superior rival. And after I have fought, dispel him once and for all. There is even a hidden ending if you complete all three walkthroughs, but I will not show it here because I really want you to play this game. Even if I have kinda ruined the suspense with the jump scare. Sorry. Oh, what the fuck was this? Well, I am sure glad this is over. Where was I? Oh yes, my Terranigma review. Hey, thank you for watching. I mentioned I have no mouth and I must scream as one of the few really scary games. If you want to know more about it, I did a review some time ago. It was one of my earliest videos, so it is not as good. But if you want to see how much I improved, why not take a look?